Praise the Lord. Pastor Davison, Reverend Waite, Antioch Church, Point Man International Ministries, who I represent today as a true servant of Jesus Christ, extends our gratitude for you inviting me to come out and share with you today. I need to share with you before we get moving here that I am on a journey. I am on a journey with Jesus Christ. But I'm not on this journey and I haven't been on this journey by myself. As pointed out, my last name is Bullock. I'm the nephew of Steve Bullock. Family is vital to men and women who have been incarcerated. But now I would really be remiss if I did not share with you that my queen, Regina, has been with me for 45 years. And yes, we just celebrated our 44th anniversary. Isn't God good? Isn't God good? God is so wonderful. I sat here and I listened. I listened to Brother Jarrett. I can relate to Brother Jarrett, big time, more, more so than you realize. I can relate to each and every one of you. One of the reasons I can relate to each and one of you is because we all share in something. We share in the freedom that Jesus Christ gave to us. I'm so glad that God heard my cry. And I'm going to tell you something else. God is doing a good thing. And he is still moving. He has not stopped. He's still blessing. Amen? Amen. I need to read from you, if I may, our text. Luke chapter 8, beginning in verse 26 and ending in verse 39. When you have it, please respond by saying amen. And God's word tells us the following. Then they sailed to the country of the Gedersenes, which is opposite of Galilee. And when he came out unto the land, he was met by a man from the city who was possessed with demons and who had not put on any clothing for a long time and was not living in a house but in the tombs. Seeing Jesus, he cried out and fell before him and said in a loud voice, What business do we have with each other, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For it had seized him many times, and he was bound with chains and shackles and kept under guard, and yet he would break his bonds and be driven by the demons into the desert. And Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he said, legion, for many demons had entered him. They were imploring him not to command them to go away into the abyss. Now there was a herd of many swine feeding there on the mountain. And a demon implored him to permit them to enter the swine. And he gave them permission. And the demons came out of the man and entered the swine. And the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they ran away and reported it in the city and out in the country. The people went out to see what had happened. 
And they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting down at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they became frightened. Those who had seen it reported to them how the man who was demon-possessed had been made well. And all the people of the country of the Genesenes in the surrounding district asked him to leave them, for they were gripped with great fear. And he got into a boat and returned. But the man from whom the demons had gone out was begging him that he might accompany him. But he sent him away saying, Return to your house. And describe what th great things God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and understanding of his word. Now I cannot tell you what this man had done throughout his life that led up to him being cast out from people, society, bounded up in chains, and so forth. But I can tell you this, that I can relate to being outcasted from society. I can also share with you some of the things that led to my being outcasted from society. I can tell you that as a man who spent two years in Vietnam, I came home, but prior to coming home, after many engagements, I used to say to myself, if I could just make it back home, everything would be all right. But when I got back home, I found I couldn't come back home. I was not received well. I didn't even realize at the time that I had changed. Truth be told, I was scared of my own self. And I no longer knew myself as the young man that went into the service. Work was not easy to find. And I found that one of the things that I became equipped to do, and equipped to do very well in the service, led me to respond in a very irresponsible way that led me to becoming incarcerated. It didn't lead me just to be incarcerated, it actually snuffed out my life. Because man said I would never walk the streets again, that I would serve a minimum of 50 years to life. While in prison, I had told my wife to go on with her life. I have to deal with this. But I have to tell you also, I needed Jesus. I needed help. I didn't know how to cry out for help. I didn't know how to pray. So many things I was taught as a child was forgotten. What little faith I had was almost non-existent. But I'm going to tell you something. When Jesus says in his word that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, if you have faith the size of a a mustard seed he will hear you he will come to you he will save you I recall when Jesus came to me I recall how Jesus heard my cry I recall thinking that I finally felt some peace within myself that 
Now it's time for me to get out of prison. But I found something out, just as Jesus told this man here. He told him, praise God, to return to your house and describe what great things God has done for you. Jesus told me the same thing. He didn't tell me to go back and get out of prison and go to my natural home. He told me, I'm with you. He impressed upon me something I didn't realize. He gave me a brand new life. He pressed upon me a hunger for his personal attention. He pressed upon me the desire to learn more about him. Just like it tells us, praise God, in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, Jesus tells the people to learn of him or learn from me. I needed to do that. I couldn't get enough studies. Sat down in my cell, writing different ministries, asking for different Bible courses and what have you. Some of the people that I was doing time with couldn't get over the fact <laughs> that my, my nickname was Bull. Watching Bull walk around the yard with a Bible in his hand. And I had, I have to say, I have to say, I had the type of reputation that you didn't want to mess with me <laughs> as, far, as far as laughing at me about carrying a Bible. But people scratched their head. They scratched their head. They tried to figure, well, it must be a scam. But it wasn't no scam. People finally approached me and wanted to know, man, what's going on? You're not losing it, are you? I said, yeah, I lost it all right, but I found it too. <laughs> Jesus opened many doors for me, and he used me. In the best way I can describe it to you, I am on a mission for Jesus Christ. Today makes exactly nine years that I've been out of prison. Minimum time for a person serving life on parole to be considered to be released from parole in the state of New York is three years. My parole officers, along with a senior parole officer, after observing me after my release, they wrote <laughs> Albany, Division of Veterans Affairs, I'm the Veterans of uh, Parole, and they told them that keeping him on parole is a waste of taxpayers' money. Now, let me tell you this. When I got out of prison, one of the first things I told my wife, because God has used me so many different ways in the prison system to help lead so many other brothers in a better place that involve having a relationship with Jesus Christ. I told her to buckle her seatbelt. And she asked me, what's going on? I said, the Lord has more work to be done. I got out of prison. I didn't return back to our hometown, but I returned to a town where we had bought our home. I couldn't get work, couldn't find work. I couldn't get work if I begged, and I did beg. The VA, after talking with me and doing a solid assessment and seeing some things that transpired, offered me an opportunity to participate in a program called the Compensated Work Therapy Program. They asked me if I would take it. They only paid minimum wage. There was no benefits for my family, and I couldn't say yes fast enough. I took it. I mean, after all, minimum wage, <laughs> that's like hitting a lottery after coming out of a prison system, making only $15 every two weeks. 
I was more than happy. But one of the things that Jesus taught me, and he still teaches everyone today, is that humility has power. Humility has power. I've run into brothers, yes, and sisters too, who have come home from prison, and some reason or another they, get, they got this thing twisted. They have in their mind where society owes them something. That they deserve this and that they deserve that. And I can't begin to tell you how many brothers and sisters I sit down with and I try to explain that to them. Some listen, some don't. But I'm grateful to God. I'm grateful to God that he has placed me in his service. After that particular position, another job opened for me with a nonprofit organization. Asked me to take on a responsibility or a position that they never had before as a job developer, helping men and women coming out of prison, state prisons, federal prisons, you name it. And I took it on. And they told me it would be a trial basis for six months. And if it doesn't work out after six months, no hard feelings. After two months, they offered me a permanent position. It might be labeled as a job to some people, but to me, it's labeled as a ministry. It's labeled as a service to God. Because God wants us to give attention to those who are oppressed. He wants us to give attention to people who are in prisons, just as though we're in there with them. And then I need to tell you that God is not done. God has made it possible for me to take a position with the VA. Not that there's anything wrong with pushing a broom or a dustpan, but they placed me in a position as a counselor. And I do a lot of traveling. And each day I have to be prepared to roll my sleeves up because I'm going out in different communities. I'm going out to different states. And I'm working with homeless veterans. Homeless veterans. I'm working with veterans that don't even know about some of the benefits that they have or are available to them. Recently, we just celebrated having our seventh stand down in our community where we live, which paves a way for veterans in need to be able to come out along with their families. Some veterans who have been killed in action, some of their families don't know about some of the benefits that are available to them. But God has used me to spearhead it. We started with eight veterans in my backyard or our backyard. Our last stand down, we had 153 veterans to come out and that's not counting their family members. That's how God is using this vessel. It's not about me, it's about God. It's about Jesus. It's about letting him in. It's about getting rid of that pride and saying, Lord, help me. Lord, I can use your help. Lord, save me. And <laughs> the Lord will respond in so many different ways. Don't expect him to pull up in front of you with a great big Cadillac and think that's his way of getting you out of a situation. The Lord loves the humble. And if you think about in the, in, the, in the Bible, about the different men and the different women that he's used in a position of leadership, I can't think of one who has not experienced some type of brokenness. Some of them were touched in some sort of way by God. You know, God impressed upon me to trust him. And that's what I do. I trust God. I don't know what he's going to have in store for me tomorrow. I don't know what he's going to have in store for me this afternoon. But I do know one thing. I am trusting him. And anyone that knows me will tell you, because of the personal relationship I have with God, I don't compromise my relationship with God for nobody. 
That's not going to happen. You know, whether it's under my own roof, whether it's uh, at the job place, or no matter where it's, where it's at, I do not compromise my relationship with God. And I certainly don't compromise my relationship with his word. And another issue, let me just point out to you, everyone needs to hear God's word. Some people will tell you, well, I haven't got the ability to preach. I haven't got the ability to teach. But we all do have the ability to teach. By example, if we be the men and women of God that we profess to be, God will find us a position in his army. God will find a uniform for us to fit in. God will give us our orders. Some people say marching orders. Unfortunately, everybody doesn't have the ability to march, but everyone has the ability to serve. Everybody has the ability to glorify God. Everybody has the ability to exalt God. Everybody has the ability to give praise to God for, with every fiber of your being. God's word tells us, praise God, mm. that everything that breathes, Give praise to the Lord. Isn't God wonderful? You know, praise God. God speaks to us in so many different ways. When I walked into the church this morning, I was blessed to hear the pastor sharing that very subject with someone. The Lord has spoken to me and he continues to speak to me so many different ways and sometimes he impresses us various ways as well. And I, I just want to just share this with you and I ask that you just allow me your ears and your attention about something that God has shared with me and these may not be the words that we're accustomed to hearing but they're the words that God gave me and if you can relate to it I ask that you join with me. Amen? God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has raised me up and he has set me free. God has raised me up and he has set me free. Join me. God has set me free. God has smiled on me and he has set me free. I am so grateful to you, Antioch Church, for your service to our brothers and sisters and to the families of those who are incarcerated. And I want to say to each one of you, God bless you. And I pray you continue doing what you're doing, and I pray that every step that you take will completely continue to glorify God. I love you and I thank you. Amen.